I didn't draw this and I didn't paint this. I carved it. So this is what I did. I took this piece of pink rubbery kind of like eraser stuff. And then I took this little blade. This is a, this is a sharp blade and I carved the picture onto the pink rubbery stuff. And here it is. So I carved it out, then I rolled ink on it, and I put my paper on top and rubbed it all over, and then when I peeled my paper off, I wow. had the print of the ink. So this is called Lino Cut, and this is a class that we might, we might have at Maxtivity in the future. So I drew this picture. This is two of my daughters sitting on a couch. So I was pretty proud of the fact that I did this in just two hours and it actually turned out looking like them. Because sometimes <laughs> when you draw a picture of someone, it doesn't look like them, but it actually looks like them. So I was pretty excited about that. So good job. So we're gonna get started today. Remember last week we did a seascape? Okay. Today we're gonna do a landscape. And this landscape is going to be modeled on a landscape that Vincent Van Gogh did many, many years ago. It's called Wheatfield. I've got a book of Vincent Van Gogh paintings and this is a pop out. It's called Wheatfield and he used paint and it's, it's crows flying in a wheat field and it looks like there's a storm coming because the sky is kind of dark. So, our picture isn't gonna look just like this because we aren't using paint. And also we're not gonna do two roads, we're just gonna do one. We're gonna keep it real simple, but we're gonna kind of do it in Vincent Van Gogh's style. So his style was lots of little marks of paint. He didn't do big swaths of paint. He did lots of little brush strokes. And when you put all the little brush strokes together, you get a beautiful painting. So we're going to do a landscape of wheat crows in the wheat field in his style as much as is possible using crayons or markers or whatever it is that you have with you today. So the first thing we need to do is outline it in pencil. So I'm going to use a Sharpie so that you can see better. And I'm going to draw mine on this easel. So I'm going to have to move my camera over so you can see a little bit better. Hmm, this is always tricky. Let's see, I think you can see it pretty good like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our horizon line. The horizon line is the line that you see far off in the distance when you're, when you're standing outside, looking off into the distance, maybe across the field. It's the farthest point you can see. So we're gonna put our horizon line about a little more than halfway up the page. So a little more than halfway up the page, we're gonna do a straight line across and your page should be um, horizontal. So it's the long way. And we're gonna make a horizontal line that goes pretty much straight all the way across the page, a little more than halfway up. That's our horizon line. Now, when you're looking far away into the distance, things get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go farther away from you, right? So we're going to put a little point right there in the middle of our horizon line, and we're going to call that our vanishing point. And that's where things vanish, because you're looking, you're looking so far into the far away from you that things just get smaller and smaller until they vanish. So that's our vanishing point. And we're gonna put our pencil on our vanishing point and we're gonna make a stretched out S coming down our page. So it's gonna go like this. Stretched out S, right off the bottom of the page. This is going to be a dirt road, a road made of dirt or maybe kind of a path that the wagons would drive on when they were collecting wheat and carrying the wheat out of the field. So we're gonna draw the other side of our path 
and it's going to be very skinny at the vanishing point, and then it's going to get wider and wider as we get close to the bottom, but our line has to kind of curve with that line. It wouldn't look like a path if one line was straight and one line was curved. They have to curve together. So put your pencil here and start out real close together. And then as you come down the page, as you get closer to the viewer, it widens out until you get down here and it's very wide. So look at that. See, now it looks like we've got a windy dirt road going off into the distance until it vanishes at the vanishing point. Now we are going to put a sun in the sky, but I think actually, hmm, I think maybe actually it's a big moon. We're going to put a moon in the sky and we're not going to put the moon smack dab in the middle of the page. We've got our road in the middle of the page. So to make it a little more interesting, let's put our moon off to the side. If everything's right in the middle, it's kind of boring. So when we compose a picture, we want some things in the middle and some things off to the side. So let's put our moon, make it nice and big, just a big round circle right here in the sky. So the road kind of points to the moon. It's kind of curving towards it. So your eye follows the road and then it follows it right to the moon. Now that is really all we need to draw right now with our pencils. The next thing we need is our crayons or colored pencils or markers. Now in the past, since this is so big, it would take me a really long time to do it with crayons or markers. So I'm gonna use chalks again, but that's just so you can see it better. And so that it um, doesn't take me so long. So we're gonna do the sky first. So let's take blue. Take, um, if you have a, a medium or a light blue, let's do that first. So we're gonna take a blue and we're not gonna just color it in because that's not what Vincent Van Gogh did. Vincent Van Gogh did little dashes of paint with his paintbrush. So we're gonna do little dashes of blue all over our sky. And when we get to our moon, we're going to go around the moon with little dashes around it. The dashes are going to follow the circular shape of the moon and we're going to kind of go out from the moon a bit. So also, if you want it to seem like it's windy in your sky, you can make your dashes not just go straight across, but maybe curve. Can you see my dashes? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have dashes kind of going in different directions. So it kind of looks like there's wind. So lots of dashes. We're going to do more than one color in our sky. We're just starting with the light blue. So lots of dashes all over our sky, just like Vincent Van Gogh did. I have um, two links to some short videos about Vincent Van Gogh that I emailed to Miss Lori so that she can email them to you after class. If you want to watch a video about Vincent Van Gogh. That's a great idea. I'll be happy to pass that on. He was an amazing artist and it's so great to follow a, an artist and their techniques. So a way that we can get better and then discover our own techniques and style for sure. Yeah. So after you put light blue dashes in your sky, we're going to take a dark blue. If you have it. Hi, Anna. And we're going to put dark blue dashes in our sky and they're, they're just going to follow the other dashes. So if, if you made curves in your dashes, we don't want to put a lot of dark blues around the moon because we want the moon to seem like it's glowing. So probably just leave the lights around the um, closest to the moon and maybe do one circle of dark dashes around a little ways away from your moon. But you don't want to get too close to the moon with the dark because you want it to appear like it's shining. So it, we don't want it to be too dark right around that moon. So put some little dashes of the dark 
blue all over your sky, following the same patterns that you created before with your light blue dashes. So the moon is out, but it's just dusk. The moon is just rising. It's not completely dark yet. That's why we can still see some blue. We're gonna add some black to the sky in a bit, but not yet. First, we wanna add more blue. Just little dashes of blue showing the swirls in the night sky. Vincent van Gogh had a way of seeing things a little different than everybody else saw them. And no one had ever looked at the sky before and thought of it as little dashes. So that was something new when he was painting. When we're all done with this and the video is and we're and we say goodbye, if you have watercolors, you could go back with watercolor paint and lightly paint in um, a light blue over the whole sky and the wheat field later when we're done with yellow over the wheat field. But <clears throat> we're just, we're not gonna do that in class today, but that's just a suggestion for later if you wanted to, because you can see there's still some dashes of white showing through. So that would fill in all the dashes that are still white if you wanna do that later. So when you're done with your dark blue crayon, we're gonna take black. And the black isn't gonna be all over. It's mostly gonna be towards the top because we wanna feel like there's maybe a storm coming or the darkness of night. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before, little dashes that kind of go in the same pattern as the dashes you already have. And it's okay if they go over top of each other. And kind of avoid your moon because you don't want a, the moon to be dark. You want the moon to look like it's glowing. So we don't want to put a lot of dark around the moon. Maybe just it's going to go over the top of the moon a little bit. Just kind of blend the dark in here and there so it comes down a little bit, but doesn't maybe doesn't fill the whole space. Maybe there's still a little bit of sunlight. I'm going to put more dark up here in this corner. Hopefully your paper isn't as big as mine, so it's not going to take you forever to fill up all this space. How do you think that's looking? Maybe a little bit more, maybe just a little bit around the moon. The crows in the sky later that are going to be black. So if there's too much black in the sky, we won't see our crows. So I think I better stop there so that I can leave space for our crows to show up. All right, so now we're going to do the wheat field. If you haven't finished your sky, maybe you can finish it a bit later. So we're gonna start with a light yellow and hopefully you have, well, we'll just start with yellow. Start with yellow, and we're going to do kind of the same thing in the wheat field that we did in the sky. But down here at the bottom of your page, I'm going to put this down a little bit. This, doesn't, this easel isn't ideal. Let's have your um, wheat fields across your wheat across the bottom of the page going up like this. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe that's too bright. I'm going to have that first row of wheat standing up tall, vertical. So that's right on the edge of the wheat field. I think I'm going to use a little darker yellow. I'm not sure you can see that. Those are up vertical. That's like the first row of wheat that you can see standing up tall. It actually would be good to use two different yellows if you have two different yellows. 
uh, maybe a light one and a, and a darker one. And then after that first row, let's have some going along the road too. Let's have some wheat growing along the road going vertical, but as it goes down the road, it's going to get shorter and shorter, right? Because it's farther and farther away. So it's kind of tall at first, and then it gets shorter and shorter, and it probably stops right about there. So use your light and your dark yellow to do some vertical lines going along the edges of the road just to about halfway up, and then they, they get smaller and smaller. So now we've got all this space to fill in. How are we going to fill in that space? We're going to use our crayons again. We're just doing dashes. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll wait a minute and make sure everybody gets all their, their wheat along their road first. Whoops. Okay, we're going to do kind of slanted and horizontal dashes now to fill the rest of the field. So they're going to be probably maybe a little, well, maybe smaller and smaller as you go into the distance. But we're just going to do this, like we did the sky, but no swirly patterns this time. Just dashes that go straight across, horizontal, parallel with the horizon line. And maybe they get smaller in the distance, shorter dashes. We're just filling it with color. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Dashes are longer when they're closest to the foreground or the viewer or the front of the picture. And they're smaller way back here on the horizon line. But they're just going just kind of horizontal dashes. Just feeling that space. So Vincent van Gogh looked at things a little different than most people. And he didn't just draw things and paint things to look exactly like what he saw. He drew them more and painted them more based on what he felt when he saw them. And later, that style of painting became known as expressionism because he was expressing his feelings about something rather than trying to make it look like a photograph. So I did that color and now I think I'm going to take some green and just put a little bit of green in my field because maybe maybe some of the wheat is still a little bit green or maybe there's some grass kind of mixed in with the green. I'm just going to put a little bit of green doing the same thing horizontal dashes just adds a little interest to the picture. And maybe a little bit of the light, the light yellow that I used down here. Put some of that in. Because all I had was the darker yellow. So I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add some of the lighter yellow too. Not, not a ton, just to brighten it up. Good to have lots of colors and you can still see a lot of white space and that's okay we don't want to fill it all in it makes it more vincent van gogh-ish i think that that's all we're going to do to the wheat field for now we might add a little brown to the wheat field once we've painted our, our colored our road so I did not tell you to trace your road with a Sharpie, but if you want to do that now, 
Why don't you trace your road and your horizon line and your moon with your Sharpie now if you want to do that. If you don't, if you think you like it the way it is, that's okay, but it does make it easier to see. So I think that would be good if you want to trace your road and your horizon line and your moon with your Sharpie. We'll take a second and do that. I don't want your road to get completely lost in the wheat field. Does anybody know that song, Ease On Down the Road? It was in The Wiz. There's a musical called The Wiz. Michael Jackson was in it. Anybody know who Michael Jackson is? <laughs> Can you hum it? Yeah, it goes, come on in, ease on down, ease on down the road. Come on in, ease on down, ease on down the road. Don't you carry nothing that might be a load. Come on, ease on down, ease on down the road. This makes me think of that. It's it's basically it's the Wizard of Oz, but it's it's a new version of the Wizard of Oz. So they're dancing down the yellow brick road and they sing that song. It's a it's a fun song. You should look it up. He's on down the road. It's very danceable. So I think that when I look at this road, it just makes me want to go for a, a walk. It makes me want to just go somewhere. Walk down a dirt road in the wheat field. It sounds very nice on a nice warm summer night. Okay, so now we're gonna take brown. And we are going to color our road, but we're not going to go horizontally. We're going to follow the road. So my road curves, so I want my dashes to curve with the road. So my dashes are curving with the road and they get smaller when I get to the end. So the, in the front, they're going to be big dashes that are curving with the road. And then as I go, they're curving, 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 and they get smaller as I get to the end. So I'm just going to do that all over my road with uh, this brown and then I'll choose another brown because we're going to have two different browns if you have two different browns. If you don't have brown, two browns, you could use a brown and an orange. That would probably work. But sometimes dirt kind of looks orange from a distance. So my, my little dashes are curving with my road. Yeah, and if, if the road has like clay in it or something, it looks a lot orangier as well. That's true. Let's see what this color looks like. Okay, I do have a lighter brown. So <clears throat> once I've got my dark brown dashes, I'm gonna take my light brown and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put big dashes in the front that curve with the road. Go around this curve, we got a curve. Curving, following this, the curve of my road all the way to the end where it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It just makes it look richer to have different colors. We're, we're getting there, this is looking cool. Is it looking like Van Gogh, Miss Lori? Oh, uh, very much so. Yeah, the dashes make it look like that Van Gogh look. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like now that my road is in, my road is taking up all the attention because it's so dark. So I don't want to give my road that much attention. I want to tie my wheat field into my road a little bit more. So I'm going to use this brown, the light brown that I used on my road second, the second thing I use, and I'm gonna add some of that to the wheat field. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some light brown wheat, but I'm not gonna change direction, the, the direction the wheat's going. I'm gonna go in the same direction the wheat's already going. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white brown to those, those vertical lines in the wheat field to make them stand out a little bit more and go better with the road. My paper is not very thick. It's actually tracing paper, so it's kind of flimsy. And then I'm gonna put some dashes of that light brown in my wheat field too. And then it ties it all together more and keeps the road from being so um, bold. It makes it just blend a little bit better. I think that looks better. So 
So later, if you wanted to go over your picture in watercolor, you I would do this bottom part with a, a yellow color or a light brown color, real light brown. And then I do this with a probably a light blue, but maybe don't go too close to your moon because you want to leave some white around the moon so it looks like it's um, glowing. Now, let me think. I suppose we're ready for our crows. So we want black for the crows. And I think these crows are just kind of kind of be like mustaches or maybe like a stretched out letter M. So I'm going to do one crow right here. He's flying above the wheat field, but I'm going to put him in the wheat field. So it's like he's it might look like he's sitting on the wheat field, but he's actually flying above it. So that's what my crow is going to look like, basically. Kind of a stretched out letter M or a mustache. I'm not going to draw a mustache on myself, but that's it. And then if you want to make him a little thicker, you just kind of do that. Okay, so there's a crow. I'm going to have my crows flying around, maybe one flying in front of the moon. You can put your crows wherever you want. I think you should put about, let's start with five crows. Five crows, and we'll see how that looks. So let's see, I'll put one there and one up here. And one here. Let's see, one here. Maybe some of them could be smaller because they're farther away. So maybe some are small and ones that are bigger or closer to us. I probably, I probably made that one too big. Hard to say. That's five. I think I need more. Let's put in four more crows. Let's see how that looks. So I kind of have my crows kind of flying kind of in a group. One, two, maybe maybe a smaller one back here. Maybe a smaller one here. Hmm, how are your crows looking? It's called crows in a wheat field, so it's got to have crows. Unless you wanted to do... I don't know, something else in the wheat field. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that would be though. Oh, the crows kind of make it look cool. So, it does. Um, I didn't really, I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. I didn't really think about exactly where my crows should go, but I, I think they look okay. They're kind of in a group. They're kind of like they're in a flock. They call that a murder of crows. Did you know oh, that? Yeah. They don't call a group of crows a flock, like most birds, they call them a murder. So whenever you see a bunch of crows out in the grass, you can say, there's been a murder, but it's really just a murder of crows. <laughs> I am going to check the time. Oh, it's been about 35 minutes. So really, I think we're done. This is, this is the project for today. So I hope that you enjoyed doing a Vincent Van Gogh style work of art. I hope you, yours turned out nice. I think, I bet some of you are still working and I've changed my mind. I'm, I am going to put some dark brown. I went ahead and took, I decided I did want a little more dark in my wheat field. So if you want to take a dark brown and go over some of those lines again, I think it makes it look a little Looking better. Good. Nice. Good job. Ooh, very cool. These are so great. I love it, Kelly. Nice. Okay, so we have we saw we saw was that Samantha or Elizabeth that we saw? <laughs> yeah, so just remember that as you complete this project and anything else you're working on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I would love for you to post your pictures on um, the Maxtivity site or if when you're posting to Instagram or anything like that, if you want to use the hashtag, this is me maximizing creativity, 
And it doesn't have to be your, oh, you added the crows to your kitty cat picture. <laughs> it, Very nice. It, if you complete this project nice. or any other kind of a project, we would just love to see what you're working on throughout the week. Um, like I said before, when we do art, whatever style it is, and we share it with others, it's an inspiration and it, and it brings cheer and happiness and it, it motivates some of us to try something new. And, uh, and then it just tells us a little bit about who you are as a person. So I would just love to see what you're working on throughout the week, no matter what it is. Please, please share it with us. And Miss Julie, I think you had one more thing to say about next week's supplies, correct? Yes. So first of all, Elizabeth and Samantha and Kelly, you all did a great job with the um, perspective and having your road get smaller in the distance. It really looked like it was going off into the distance. That was great. Next week, I would like to talk about value and tints and shades. So look at my hands are all dirty from all the chalk. So next week, it'd be great if, ooh, oh, wow, that's great. Good drawing. Now you just need to color it. Great. Next week, it'd be nice if you had paint. So if you had acrylic paint or tempura paint or craft paint, it could just be the cheap paint that comes in the little bottles. Um, that'd be great, but you need black, white, and one other color. And I would suggest purple or blue for your other color, maybe even red. So black and white and one other color of paint next week, not watercolor paint, because we're going to be mixing it together. If you need paint, Max Divity has paint. So contact, contact me through, through uh, Messenger or call me or email, and we'll get you set up, okay? And um, when, we, when you use paint, it's often best to use a thicker kind of paper that can handle the wet so right. again, if you need a, 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 a paper that's good for painting, let me know. I have, I have good paper for that at the max. Okay. Does anybody else want to show us their finished product or what, how far they are? I see Samantha's got some, a skull up there. That's good. And a cat. Did anybody else do their wheat field that they want to show? Avery? Carter? Let's see Avery's. She's getting it. Carter, are you going to show us too, maybe? Oh, there we go. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. Good. Looks like a, a lovely evening in the wheat field. Thanks, Avery. Car did Carter show us his? I, I was looking at Avery's. I didn't see Carter's. Maybe he doesn't want to show. That's okay. Oh, there Oh, there we go. Whoa. Oh, that's a huge moon. Wow. Oh, great. Love the Love big it. moon. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Carter. Thanks everybody for sharing. All right, well, thanks for, it's so good to see all of you every week. So glad that you join us for some art. Keep it up, keep being creative. We'll see you next week, okay? Don't forget your paint. Bye everybody. Thank thanks you, Miss Julie. Thank you, Miss Julie. You're welcome, thanks for coming.